Hello and welcome to the Ask Linux Academy show. We take your questions from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever else, using the Ask Linux Academy hashtag, and we'll answer them on this show. You can have questions about AWS. You can have questions about uh, just our general day-to-day -day here at Linux Academy. You can ask whatever you like, honestly. If you like the questions, we'll pick them, and we'll have somebody who gives a good answer answer it for you. We've actually got Tom today, and we're focusing on AWS questions. So let's get right to it. <music> Rakanth asks, any plans on AWS services like AWS Storage Gateway or similar to migrate an on-prem application to AWS Cloud with a hands-on lab? Okay, so the short answer to your question is yes. However, there's a bit of a caveat, a bit of a longer answer to that question, and that is that we don't have an on-premise data center with all this data that you can move over. So we have to figure out how to virtualize the process. And that's something we've been working on across a lot of different labs, for AWS, so that it is something that we're absolutely working on and are going to have for you guys probably within the next couple of months if I were to take a guess. So keep a lookout for that as it's something we are definitely working on. Prakyath asks, this is an AWS question. So AWS has added a bunch of new tools recently, which has not been covered in certifications. How does Amazon decide which tools need to be covered for the certification exams? Is it perhaps by demand? So the answer to that question is that we really don't know, and I don't think that anybody really knows how AWS chooses specifically the services that are going to be on their certification exams. Now we do know based on the domains of the certification exam, so say solutions architect versus say the big data specialty, it's gonna specialize in certain services, but within those services, what exactly they'll use in terms of topics, features. We generally don't know how they go about selecting those. We just know, as a result, when either we get the blueprint or take the exam, what those topics actually are. Krishna asks, what is the order of the AWS certifications that I need to concentrate on as a guy with no prior AWS experience? Okay, so you have no AWS experience and you're wondering where you should start in terms of AWS certifications. Well, I always recommend that people new to AWS start with the AWS Certified Solutions Architect certification exam. Now, that is important because that course and certification really covers the broadest amount of AWS services and features and will give you a great foundation to move on from. After that, you can move on to the associate level sysops or associate level developer exams and then building upon that if you're ready for the pro level exams, you can move on to the certified solutions architect pro or the devops pro akshay kumar asks how do i get started with aws and get to an expert level in six months so you have no aws experience and you want to be an expert in six months well for that i would have to ask you what exactly your definition of expert would be now could you maybe be an expert in one particular aws service in six months maybe although i think that may be tricky if you want to be considered a overall aws expert that's something that's going to take years and there's no amount of study that you can do within a six month period in order to accomplish that aws is just too large there's too many services there's so much to know that you really have to spend several years using AWS to be considered an expert. I would say, however, that it is possible to study for and pass several of the certification exams within a six month period, but until you then get the requisite hands-on experience, production experience that is required to really be called an expert, and that's something that's gonna take a much longer time, probably at least a few years. From Mr. Roman, as we know, spot instances can be up to 98% cheaper than regular EC2 instances. So when should I use a spot instance and what might be the best use of it? All right, so we all know that spot pricing is a great way to save money on EC2 instances. However, a lot of people wondering when is it a right time to use spot instances? What's up, Terry? And also, when and why should we use spot instances? So the way that I always determine about whether or not we should use spot instances is, is the work that you're going to have the instances do can it be stopped and started at will? Meaning, can it be interrupted? If it can be interrupted, then it is certainly a candidate for spot instances. Because remember, when you put your bid in for the spot instance, 
if the price of the EC2 instance rises above your bid price, then it is going to terminate your instance and you're no longer going to be able to use it. So you have to make sure that whatever you're doing on that EC2 instance can be stopped without any prior notice and then can be resumed at a time when the bid price goes below your spot price. Hey, so this question isn't from the community, but I'm curious myself. What's the deal with the AWS specialty certification exams and courses? So as of today, the actual day that we're recording this, AWS just actually announced that two of the three specialty exams that have been in beta have now been released and are available for you to take. That is the big data course and also the networking specialty course. Now, both of those are currently available. You can sign up for them and you can take them. However, the interesting thing is what happened with the security specialty exam. Now that AWS has decided to basically throw in the trash and start over with. So what's really interesting with this is that AWS didn't like the results from the beta. So what they decided to do is they're going to refund everybody that took that security beta exam. They're going to redo it with a new beta, reevaluate the exam, and then maybe several months down the road, they'll release that to the public. But for now, the only two beta exams that have now gone into production for them are the specialty exams of big data at networking, which are two courses that we already have available for you here at linuxacademy.com. This one comes from Devendra on Twitter. Hello, Devendra. Can we have a separate short and deep dive courses on several important AWS topics like CloudFormation, S3, DynamoDB, et cetera? So in terms of specific deep dive courses, that is something that we're looking to do in the coming months here at linuxacademy.com. We've been working a lot in the past recent months on shoring up our AWS certification courses. So obviously we redid some of our basic certification courses, but then also developed the two new uh, specialty certification courses. So we are going to be looking to do more things involved with deep dives for CloudFormation, DynamoDB, um, Lambda and some of the other serverless stuff on AWS right now. So keep an eye out for that as it is something that we're going to be doing. And everybody say hi to Terry behind me here. Hi, everybody.